Everyone said Ryzen 7 is a good processor for streaming, but there have been few data-driven tests to look at if this is actually true. Today's benchmark will be a truly multi-threaded, multitasking workload where we're bogging down the 7700K and R7-1700 with gaming, OBS game streaming, and stream playback all on the same system at the same time. We've been saying that Ryzen should theoretically be better at game streaming dollar for dollar since its launch, but that was based largely on educated assessment of the production performance. Today, we're here to look at whether the 1700 is better than the 7700K at streaming. Not just better, but better in a meaningful, paradigm-shifting way. Before that, this is brought to you by EVGA's CLC280 liquid cooler for CPUs, which we previously benchmarked and found to be a high performer given its relative silence to the temperature output. Learn more about this $140 cooler at the link in the description below. There are a lot of things that make stream benchmarking difficult, and a lot of ways to optimize the performance for one CPU or another. For example, you could tune the H.264 profile, you could go through XSplit or OBS, and change all manner of settings in there, including the bitrate, which certainly helps out, and helps with uplink if that's a problem. Or you can start getting into Windows side things, like tuning the affinity or process priority for OBS, or for XSplit. That makes it challenging, that's why it takes a while to get through this. So everything here in this video, just to get this out of the way now, is based on our testing. We're not going to make sweeping statements about either of these two CPUs for all game streaming because, frankly, it will vary based on the game, based on if you use XSplit OBS, based on your H.264 profile and tuning, based on how much effort you're willing to put into things like process priority optimization. We've got a few of those tests here, but it's just not reasonable to do all of them. So. Everything here is based on our tests. If you get better or worse performance in one way or another, then try to use the settings we used and maybe you'll improve your performance or worsen it, depending on what you're using. So that's part one. Now, uh, the testing here looks at a few different things. We are effectively doing a multitasking test, finally, but it's by using some very heavy workloads. So we have the game running. We're using Dirt Rally right now for a baseline and then Dota 2 as well, just because it's a pretty common streamable game looking at other games for the future, but those two set a good baseline. And then we also are using OBS, or Open Broadcasting, the open source program that you can use for free. Using that, uh, we have settings tuned that are all detailed in the article below in the stream testing methodology, but the very quick part of it is based on viewer feedback from you all. We took some polls not long ago and found that the most common settings for H.264 tuning were fast and very fast, and so we chose the one in the middle, faster. And then there's a couple of others as well, like ultra fast. But we chose the one right in between what most of you use when you're streaming. And then uh, the next question we asked was, what's the bit rate that you use? And the answer was basically six to 10 megabits per second. So we tested six and 10 megabits per second for our main bit rates. Uh, our uplink, depending on the day it was tested, limits us to anywhere from 20 to 40 megabits per second up but six to 10 is always within that range. So that's a non-issue. And then uh, finally, we had some questions about Twitch versus YouTube popularity. It seemed like originally YouTube was more popular, Twitch edged it out at the end. Twitch, we had some uh, issues with on the account side, on the partner side of things. So we ended up using YouTube, which is fine because ultimately it allowed us to do more tuning anyway, just because YouTube with our accounts anyway, allows for better bit rates, allows for better resolutions, things like that. So we did do some Twitch testing at 720p60. Uh, we ended up scrapping it for some better testing with YouTube. So that's the main information. During this testing, we collected power consumption, which is a bit unique. Did that with a current clamp at the EPS 12 volt cables going to the motherboard straight from the power supply. So that is not through software. And then we also measured thermals, which we won't really be going into today in the video. There will be some notes on it in the article. Uh, and then we're focusing on viewer experience and streamer experience. Viewer experience is what someone like you would see when you're watching a game streamer and the fluidity of the stream coming out to you. Uh, and then player experience or streamer experience is what they're seeing when they're playing the game, which is not necessarily what you see. They may be, there may be some disparity in the frame rate there. So interesting stuff to look at. That goes through most of it though. This will wrap up our storyline for a lot of the 1700 versus 7700K testing. We previously tested VR and found no significant difference between the two of them for the most part. 
Now we're looking to see if the same is true for streaming. We'll start with Dirt Rally, then move to Dota 2. On the screen now is a side-by-side -side output comparison of the 7700K versus the R7-1700. We have not labeled either right now. Both are in stock configuration. This video playback is the resulting stream that went to YouTube, so this is what the viewer would experience, but not necessarily the player. This playback is at 1080p 60 natively with a 10 megabit per second uprate. And now that you've had time to develop some thoughts on the outputs, let's reveal which CPU corresponds to which playback. This gives you an idea for viewer experience, but let's put numbers to it. We'll look at the player's experience after we go through some of the OBS benchmarks. Getting to the stream performance numbers, starting with 1080p 60 at 10 megabits per second, going to YouTube using Dirt Rally first, we monitored the on-screen performance during the stream. The 7700K CPU stock dropped 44.3% of its frames during encoding due to inability to meet the 16.67 millisecond deadline. You want that number to be as close to zero as possible. Dropped frames means that they are completely skipped, they never make it to the viewer, and so it's a stuttery experience if you're not performing at 60 or 30 or whatever you've configured it to. The R7-1700 CPU dropped 0.1% of its frames, amounting to double-digit numbers versus thousands of total frames. Hang on for a second, though, because we do some process priority optimization in a moment that has interesting results and helps Intel out a bit. Within plus or minus 2% of the 16.67 millisecond delivery window for frames, or 60 FPS if you prefer, the 7700K delivers 63% of its frames at around the 60 FPS delivery cadence, while the R7-1700 manages to deliver 85.5% of its frames during the 60 FPS cadence. We want this number to be as high as possible, and we also want the next two numbers, frames above and below 16.7 milliseconds, to be as low as possible. And keep in mind that this is only looking at the frames that actually get encoded to be delivered. So, this does not count the dropped frames, for example, which were never, they just never made it this far. Even though frames faster than 16.7 milliseconds will be, well, faster, it doesn't mean that the experience will be better. We want consistency at 60 FPS, not frames delivered at varying intervals, which leads to choppiness. A frame at 8 milliseconds followed by a frame at 20 or 24 is going to look choppy. End of story. The 7700K delivers about 16% of its frames faster than 16.7 milliseconds, with the 1700 delivering 6.6% of its frames faster than this window as well. We're at 20.6 versus 8% for the frame times above 16.7 milliseconds, but ideally we're just as close to 16.7 as possible. As shown in the overclocking figures, the 7700K claws back some ground and drop frames by going to 4.9 gigahertz, but not enough to really even out the battle. Dropping to 6 megabits per second streaming will lighten the load on the CPU, so we're doing that next. At 6 megabits per second, the 7700K drops 26.4% of its frames rather than in the 40s before, and it is now markedly improved at the 6 megabit per second bitrate rather than 10. The R7-1700 is now dropping 0% of its frames, with frames in our 16.7 millisecond window improved a bit as well, bringing the 7700K to 64.4%, and AMD is delivering about the same as the 10 megabit per second test, still on the lead, though its lead in drop frames is significant and the most notable. The 7700K is delivering more frames to the player, as we'll show in a moment in most instances, but that doesn't mean the experience is good for the viewer, as we've just clearly seen. We can improve it though, and we did so with priority optimization for OBS on the 7700K, but this doesn't fix everything. By changing process priority to high on the 7700K stock, we drop down to effectively 0% dropped frames. That is an insane change from what we were just looking at a moment ago. This results in all rendered frames being delivered to the stream, but fewer frames are rendered total, so it's a trade. The 7700K is now matched with the R7-1700 technically for streaming performance insofar as ability to deliver rendered frames to the stream viewer, and it seemed that the fix was easy, except there's still FPS on the other side of the argument. Remember, just because we deliver 100% of the frames to the streaming service doesn't mean that the frame rate is high or that the frame latency is low. All it means is that we've delivered all the frames, however many that may be. This improvement occurs because we've taken resources from rendering the game and have given them to rendering with OBS for encoding on the streaming side. So we're not adding resources anywhere. That's just not possible. What we are doing is reassigning them. This means that there must be loss elsewhere in the system or the experience. It's just a matter of how relevant or visible that loss is. Looking at FPS to find out how relevant the losses are, our baseline FPS performance shows how each of the CPUs performs without any active streaming or stream playback. The stock 7700K manages 114 FPS average, 
90 FPS 1% lows and 82 FPS 0.1% lows for fluid performance across the board. Overclocking doesn't get us much more in this case. The stock 1700 operates a 108 FPS average for this particular workload with lows at 88 and 76. Remember, this isn't the number we actually care about today. We're not comparing these two numbers. It's just for perspective when we're comparing performance loss on the client side when streaming. During the 10 megabit per second stream, the 7700K drops to 104 FPS average with lows at 77.1% and 30.0.1%. We've traditionally seen a big hit to the 0.1% frame time metrics resultant of streaming, so this follows that trend. The performance loss from baseline is 9% Intel to Intel with streaming versus not, and the client side streaming performance is consistent for the player with no seriously jarring hitches, despite what the viewers are seeing in the stock configuration. AMD experiences a 16% performance loss from baseline to 10 megabits per second streaming, but again is able to sustain a better stream output for the viewer. As for the 7700K with high process priority on OBS, we drop down to 64 FPS average with 1% low frame times computing to 17 and 0.1% to 10, 1, 0. The experience is a stuttery mess and dismal all around, despite all frames technically being encoded and delivered by OBS. This is where that number is misleading. There just aren't that many frames to work with, so the job isn't that hard, and delivering 100% of frames really isn't a big deal when you have 10 for your low-end frame rate. Six megabit per second numbers will be in the article if those interest you. They're largely the same though, spoiler. Performance on the streamer side is relatively good on both processors overall. Let's now look at power consumption during the 10 megabit per second dirt stream. We're measuring power consumption by clamping the 12 volt wires going to the EPS 12 volt CPU cables, and then multiplying the current clamp reading by 12.3 volts, which is the output of our power supply down those cables. The 7700K plots first with a very stable and consistent 66 watt draw from the EPS 12 volt cables. And when we overclock the 7700K, which did improve streaming performance output somewhat significantly in cases, if not enough to compete anyway, the overclocked version results in about 89 watts drawn at the PSU cables. And plotting the R7-1700 power consumption last, we see power consumption that averages out to about 64 to 67 watts, with peak consumption at 68.9, and the 7700K and 1700 are drawing effectively equal amounts of power in these tests, though the 1700's response seems more varied. Next game, you're now looking at Dota 2 in a side-by-side -side comparison between the 7700K and 1700, which we've left unnamed once again. Dota 2 doesn't run into any limitations other than the CPU for this test, given its lightweight GPU workload. This was conducted while playing back a match with Team Complexity during the 2017 Invitational, so each test is identical to the previous and is easily replicable. We start this test around the 15 minute mark of the playback. Let's reveal which CPU is which. The unveil is probably somewhat expected after the results from Dirt, but on to the numbers next. Starting with streaming output performance at 10 megabits per second, we observe about 59.9% of drop frames on the 7700K, with the overclocked version dropping 54% of its frames for a slight improvement. Of the frames that the 7700K does successfully deliver without dropping, 85% are dispatched within the 2% window of 16.7 milliseconds, and the R7-1700 manages to deliver 95% of its total encoded frames within 2% of its 16.7 millisecond window. Remember, this metric isn't counting drop frames since those frames were never made anyway. They were never encoded. So the number looks a bit better than perhaps it is in reality to the viewer. Dropping to six megabits per second improves performance across the board as expected on this next chart. Well, for Intel anyway, AMD's performance really couldn't get much better than it was already. The 7700K now drops just 47% of its frame stock, 38% overclocked, with 94% of the total delivered frames landing within 2% of the 16.7 millisecond window. That's good for consistency, but the actual delivery isn't really that great and can't really make use of it. And these R7-1700 didn't drop any frames in this test and delivered 98% within the 16.7 millisecond window, looking good. Giving OBS a process priority of high, however, and ranking it above Dota for the performance priority in Windows, we've again resolved the issue of dropping frames and are now delivering all frames to the stream service. Theoretically, this smooths things out, but not of FPS tanks. Let's take a look at that next. Moving on to FPS testing with Dota 2, we found our baseline performance to be about 171 FPS average with the 7700K with lows at 89 and 47 0.1%. Dota has some issues here as it always has. The 1700's baseline performance is 167 average. Again, and this is important, the point here isn't to compare the two against each other right now. We're just establishing a baseline for comparison against the same product while streaming. 
While streaming at 10 megabits per second, the 7700K manages a 118 FPS average for a 31% reduction in baseline average FPS performance when not streaming. The R7-1700 manages 73 FPS average for a 56% reduction from its baseline. The 7700K delivers a higher frame rate and overall better experience to the client-side streamer in this instance, while the R7-1700 delivers a better experience for the viewer. Different sides of the same coin. The difference is that the 1700 manages a still adequate frame rate for both the streamer, despite being lower overall, while also offering a significantly better frame rate for the viewers. This is the balancing act, and in our current round of tests, AMD appears to be doing that better. Our test with process priority on OBS yields an average FPS of 92, still better than AMD's R7 1700 streaming average FPS, and our lows are at 34 and 21. Overall, results are worse than the stock 7700K test with normal process priorities, but better than AMD's results. It's a hell of a fight for Intel to get this far, but in this lighter weight game that's more frequency intensive, the 7700K manages to pull it off. Not gracefully, mind you, and you have to do some tuning, but it's possible. Moving on to power consumption at 1080p60 with a 10 megabit per second up rate, the 7700K sustains a flat, consistent power consumption of 63.96 watts at the EPS 12 volt rails with a plus or minus 2% error from our device, identical to last time, really, or close to it. And the 1700 is bouncing around near 60 to 63 watts of power consumption with minimum at 52 and maximum at 65. The 1700 averages a couple watts lower power draw overall versus the 7700K, but there's no major difference between them. Now this is where all those caveats come into play that we mentioned earlier. If you wanted to stream on the 7700K, you could. There are just a lot of things you'd have to do to make it happen, and it's really going to depend on the games you're playing. For one, you could change the quality, where we did faster H.264, you could drop to something like very fast or ultra fast, which will increase your encoding speed at the cost of the output quality to the viewer on the stream. There is some level of placebo effect once you get down into the slower settings, mind you, so there's room to do this tuning. If you wanted to, you could also set process priority for OBS, which clearly picked up the streaming performance, but did hurt our gaming performance. So depending on what game it is, you may or may not have room there to do that. If you're already struggling to run the game without process priority given to OBS, you're gonna struggle even worse when OBS is given priority. And ultimately, if the game just can't sustain a good frame rate to begin with, it's not gonna look good on the stream either. Even if it delivers 100% of the frames, if you're delivering 20 frames a second, it's still gonna be 20 frames a second, despite how efficient or consistent that delivery is. The next item of note is that you can keep in mind the more intensive games will have more difficulty coping with the process deprioritization when given to OBS, as resources get assigned to OBS rather than the game, we're not creating more resources, we're just moving them around, and you have a finite amount of resources on the CPU side to give to the game and the streaming service, and in this case also the playback service, which is the lightest workload of all. Finally, you could lower the bit rate. Where we did 10 and 6, you could go down to something like 3,500 kilobits per second or 4,000, basically 4 megabits per second below. That would certainly help out, but again, you're doing so at the cost of quality for the output product. Just depends on how important it is to you to have a higher quality stream. If you're doing this professionally, it's probably still worth looking into a dedicated streaming box. That'll make your life a lot easier going forward, but it is potentially a more expensive solution, if not more expensive, depending on the market of RAM and all that stuff right now. Uh, in the very least, it is more space consuming. So uh, different options for different folks. But Right now, as it stands in our test today, Dirt Rally and Dota 2 being the only two examples we have currently, Intel is getting crushed in Dirt Rally. It's kind of doing okay in Dota if you do all the tuning, but uh, again, you're entering into arguments where, yes, it can compete, but you have to work for it, you have to lower your quality potentially, and AMD is doing it a bit easier out of the box, which is kind of an interesting flip considering AMD out of the box when Ryzen shipped and up until really just recently had a whole lot of issues. It was a, uh, like we said about Vega, it was a project car. You bought it because you were okay with the idea of playing around with settings. You were okay with the idea of BIOS updates, of Windows updates, of tuning things and trying to get things to work, of finding stability for memory timings. Those things were hopefully okay to you as a project. But now, looking at streaming, 
Intel is the one that requires the tuning. Intel has become the project car. So depending on what you're doing, there are different options for different people. And right now, we have to go with AMD Ryzen 7 CPUs dollar for dollar versus Intel, so the 7700K versus the 1700 for streaming. That probably extends down to the R5 line as well. We haven't tested it yet, but one could reasonably assume that an R5 CPU versus an i5 CPU is probably going to crush an i5, potentially more so than we've seen here. But we haven't tested it yet. It's just that uh, looking at the numbers, we have core counts, we have thread counts, we have the processor speeds. It's pretty clear how it would perform. And the i5s don't hold on as well as the i7s do because they've got a frequency deficit and a major thread deficit to the i7s. And of, of course, the R5 is by extension. So uh, if you're streaming and you don't want to use NV encoder and you don't want to use a capture machine, look at Ryzen for the easier to work with option. If you are using one of those things, it doesn't matter so much. Pick whatever's going to play your game at the frame rate you want and then hook it into NV encoder uh, at the risk of the other new issues you have to run into with that side of things or hook it into a capture box and really resolve pretty much everything quality wise but introduce a whole bunch of new headaches for you in terms of money spent, space consumed, and learning how to use the tools. There's no perfect solution here, but AMD is doing well to compete in a market where previously Intel had no competition to the point that Intel CPUs kind of looked okay. But today it's different. So thank you for watching. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help support this type of testing. It does take quite a bit of time to figure out. We have a lot more we want to do with streaming. I'm curious to hear what you use for your settings when you stream. We've already asked this question a few times now. It doesn't hurt to tell us below what settings you use, what quality you try to target when outputting. Maybe we'll consider it for inclusion in our next round of tests. Games, of course, are also interesting to us. So if there's a particular game you want to see tested, maybe Overwatch, let us know below. Subscribe for more as always. And again, gamersnexus.squarespace.com for this brand new shirt design. It's actually a teardown of the GN logo. It's got a bunch of Easter eggs in there like VRMs, PCIe slots, stuff like that. Cool stuff. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Oh, that the frame latency? Frame latency. <sighs>